But now, here is a very exciting announcement. The governing body is pleased to announce that a very special video series about Jesus is currently being developed. Work is underway to develop and produce a new live action dramatic series on Jesus Christ. The title of the series is The Good News According to Jesus. This series will combine the strengths of all our preceding research and study tools with the power of the moving image and will enable the viewer to gain an even deeper understanding of Jesus' life and ministry, which in turn increases our knowledge of Jehovah. Although other religious and commercial institutions have produced various films on the life of Jesus, these have often been tainted by unscriptural views of Jesus, or they have placed excessive emphasis on violence. And existing video productions focus on one Bible book at a time or only on specific episodes of Jesus' ministry on earth. The good news according to Jesus, however, will show all the events of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the order in which they happened and in as much of the rich detail as current research and Bible understanding will allow. Often a presentation like the one you're about to see is shown after a feature-length drama is released. Such behind-the-scenes videos help us to understand and appreciate various facets of the video-making process. Today, however, we are giving you a preview, a first look at an upcoming convention project that will take years to complete. In view of the large scope of this project, we encourage you to make it a matter of earnest prayer to Jehovah and please support it according to your circumstances. There we go. The request for funding almost inevitably there putting their hands out and saying, please help us to fund this thing that we've already decided to do. What about that verse about sitting down and calculating before you build a tower? What about the wisdom there? Apparently that doesn't apply to the faithful slave. They just go ahead and do things or produce things or build things irrespective of whether they have the funds available or not so that they release something or announce something immediately followed by, oh, please make this a matter of prayerful thought as to whether you can support this according to your circumstances. But yes, here we have confirmation of what I already divulged on this channel, if you remember, on January 1st of this year. Another thing is that there will be apparently a series of live action videos produced about the life of Jesus based on the stories from the Gospels. So, yeah, not quite sure what that's going to look like, how that's going to work. But apparently we're going to get someone playing a live action <laughs> A live action messiah. Wonder who got that privilege. And they better be super tight when it comes to their spirituality because you do not want that person waking up. <laughs> Indeed. So yes, I filmed that on January 1st based on a tip-off, a leak from a Bethel insider. And it's nice to have that piece of information validated. I now know that I can trust my Bethel Insider. So that's good to know. But yes, very interesting. A live action Messiah. Who are they going to pick to play the role? Will that person ever end up waking up? And who knows, joining me on the channel or producing their own apostate content. 
I did find it interesting. Well, a few things were interesting there. They talked about videos or movies based on Jesus created by other religious and commercial institutions, and they slammed these for unscriptural views of Jesus or placing excessive emphasis on violence. Interesting that Stephen Lett should be saying that, given the fact that it was he who, in the May 2020 JW Broadcasting episode, had to defend the organization's own dramatic videos for their excessive violence after concerns were raised by parents, by Jehovah's Witness parents, who have felt sufficiently concerned about this, about the levels of violence in Jehovah's Witness video propaganda, that they've written into the headquarters and forced the organization onto the back foot so that Stephen Letts had to defend the levels of violence in JW propaganda. And then Tony Morris has doubled down and done exactly the same thing, defended the organization's use or portrayal of violent acts of judgment, essentially saying, we know better than you do, Jehovah's Witness parents. We know what's best for your children. We've decided that children need to see a realistic impression of what awaits them in the future if they don't follow our authority. So interesting that they're now pointing the finger at other films by other religious and commercial institutions for their use of excessive emphasis on violence when they've come under criticism from their own followers for exactly the same thing. Stephen Lett also talks about showing all the events of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John in the order in which they happened. Well, even those books can't agree <laughs> exactly on the order in which things happened, as I'm going to come to. And in as much of the rich detail as current research and Bible understanding will allow. I think that's a very careful use of words. Interestingly, Stephen Lett says nothing about Bible scholarship. So they're not going to be consulting Bible scholars and scholars of the New Testament to find out what happened and what didn't happen or how things likely happened. They are basing the series, it seems, on their current research and Bible understanding as untrained, uneducated people who just have their religious ideas about the New Testament and will inevitably want to flavor this production with their own ideas and their own dogma, irrespective of whether their version or their spin is accurate according to modern Bible scholarship. Would you like to see what episode one might look like? To provide an advanced impression of the look and feel of an episode, audio video services prepare storyboards. We're pleased to share with you now an excerpt from an animated storyboard. Assuming that he was in the group traveling together, they went a day's journey and then began to search for him among the relatives and acquaintances. But not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem and made a diligent search for him. Child, why did you treat us this way? Here, your father and I have been frantically looking for you. Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in the house of my father? However, they did not understand what he was saying to them. 
Then he went down with them and returned to Nazareth, and he continued subject to them. Also his mother carefully kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus went on progressing in wisdom and in physical growth and in favor with God and men. The true light that gives light to every sort of man was about to come into the world. Of course, this is not the final video. Rather, it's an example of how the words on a page can come to life. Preparing simple, basic drawings to convey the idea of a video is one of the early visual tools used during the approval process. The animatic review is a very early milestone for the visual storytelling. It's really difficult to take this guy seriously. I mean, he's so over the top, isn't he? Everything has to be done in this super melodramatic way. It's very difficult to read into him any level of sincerity when you're watching him talk. Again, how do you square the circle if you're one of Jehovah's Witnesses? It's one of those things where looking at things from the other side now, you wonder how Jehovah's Witnesses could possibly take Stephen Lett seriously when he is so over the top with his gestures and frankly talking down to his audience. Yes, we get it. It's an animated storyboard. <laughs> it's not the final product. You've already made that clear. And then he repeats himself afterwards, just assuming that his audience won't have heard the first time or will be jumping to conclusions or forgetting, I guess, what he said the first time. But yes, an animated storyboard first look at what the first episode of The Good News According to Jesus is going to look like. They're going to discuss the story of Jesus being found by his mother at the temple, speaking to the religious leaders there and impressing everyone with his knowledge. That will be episode one of this new project. But how has the project been developed? What direction has the governing body given for bringing events in Jesus' life to the screen? So first of all, the governing body approved the concept of producing a production like this. But there were some questions. How do you do it? So three options were given to the governing body. The first option was for us just to have a theatrical stage production, similar to what we'd already done. The second set of uh, options involved having a narrator speak and just read the sections of scripture and in the background to have acting, but not actually to have Jesus speaking or those involved with Jesus speaking. And then finally, the third option, which is of course the hardest and involves a lot of work, is to do a real life drama. So we were interested to see how the governing body would feel about this and what a joyous time it was to see the brothers say, we want the best for the brotherhood. We want them to be able to see the power and impact of what Jesus taught. Yes, we want the third option. So then we realized there's a lot of work ahead. He's getting all excited or they're getting all excited about this fairly mundane, fairly ordinary decision-making process that they've gone through. And they're bigging it up as though it's this huge revelation <laughs> that the organization has had. Yes, we pondered very carefully on these three options and we were interested to know which of these three options we would choose. That was confusing, by the way, because he, he says we were interested to see how the governing body would feel about this. 
and he's a governing body member. So when he says we, what is he referring to? I think he is referring to the teaching committee because the governing body is subdivided into six different committees and the committee that has the most input on video propaganda is unquestionably the teaching committee which three governing body members at least Stephen Lett, Jeffrey Jackson and Tony Morris are all on so I think when he says we were interested he's referring to those other governing body members on the teaching committee who were perhaps wondering which of these three options the governing body would decide on. Again, they're making this huge song and dance about something that's actually very uninteresting and tedious. But what confused me was he goes through the three options. He says the first option was a theatrical stage production similar to what we'd already done. I'm guessing he means the same thing as what we've done with the Hezekiah drama, the Nehemiah drama, the Jonah drama. That's what I'm thinking. Then he says, oh, we could just have a narrator speaking and enacting what the narrator is saying without there being any dialogue. And then the third option sounds like the first option. He says, a real life drama. Well, a drama by definition is not real life. So that's a bit confusing. But it sounds like the third option is pretty much the first one. So maybe I'm just misunderstanding something. Or maybe Jeffrey Jackson has just poorly communicated what these three options are. In any case, it's all fairly mundane and straightforward. Not something to be getting all excited or jumping up and down about, but they make it sound as though this is a huge deal and their objective is to convince Jehovah's Witnesses that Jehovah's guidance, Jehovah's Holy Spirit is behind this creative process.